one. Hi, I'm Joseph Edwards, and today I'll be performing an industry analysis on the packaged food industry versus the oil field services and equipment industry. Uh, the objective of this project is to perform a financial statement analysis on 10 different companies, five from each of the industries I just, uh, just said. I'll be looking at the most recent five years of data, and I'll be looking for trends over these five years, as well as comparisons to the industry average as a whole. Uh, my goal is to choose the best company from each industry, and then to compare these two industries to each other, and choose an overall best companies company. I'll be starting with the packaged food industry losers. Uh, first, we have Treehouse Foods. Their profit margin, return on assets, and return on equity are all falling steadily from 2009 to 2013. Uh, each of them fell about 30 to 40 percent over the five years, and each of them is three to five times below what the industry numbers are. So negatives across the board pretty much. Their equity multiplier is steady, and their total asset turnover is below one. So inefficiency with their assets, taking the same amount of debt. Their ROE decomposition isn't looking too great. Uh, but their price to earnings ratio is still high. So with mostly negative indicators and a high price to earnings ratio, I would call them a little bit overvalued. Next, we have ConAgra Foods. Their ROE has been on somewhat of a roller coaster. In 2009, it was 19.45. It kind of went up and down and settled at 5.76 in 2013. Their profit margin followed about the same trend, 7.87 in 2009, up and down, settling at about 1.71 in 2013. Their ROA is down over time and their equity multiplier is doubled. So their ROE decomposition is also pretty troublesome and their total asset turnover below one in 2013, 2014. Again, poor ROE decomposition. Their enterprise value is steady and up in 2013 and 2014. So the value of their firm is going up. That's probably their most positive sign. Um, their price to earnings ratio is up and down and currently it's at a low point. So the only reason I would say to invest in ConAgra is because their stock price has shown the ability to go up and currently it's low so if you bought now that price could go up but to me this is a little bit of a gamble and their numbers aren't solid enough for me to warrant investment. Next we have our package food middlemen. We have Kellogg. They're seemingly a trendless. Uh, their ratios are seemingly trendless. Uh, ROE was better than the industry average all five years, but their equity multiplier was 40 to 70% higher. So their ROE decomposition is um, just okay, really. Um, profit margin and ROA did reach their highest levels in 2013. Uh, economic value added was positive all five years, but it dropped by 400 million in both 2012 and then again in 2013. So economic value added is trending heavily downward. Um, so Kellogg, not, not bad, just kind of tough to read, pretty trendless uh, for the most part of most of their ratios, some above the industry, some below the industry. Next, we have General Mills. There were signs that their total asset turnover is co consistently at about 0 0.8, uh, so less than one, so they're less than efficient with their assets. Their current ratio is uh, less than one four out of five years, but their times interest earned is sufficient and rising, so they are not having a problem paying off their debt. ROE is on par with the industry with 20% less in debt, so their ROE, ROE decomposition is looking good. Their price to earnings ratio is trending upward, but it's still below the industry average, so to me I'd call them undervalued. Their numbers are looking good, but their price to earnings ratio is still below the industry. So to me, they're a little bit undervalued. They have the highest enterprise value out of all the five companies and their economic value added was highly positive all five years. So to me, General Mills is looking really solid. However, the reason General Mills is not my winner is because the king is Hershey Company. Their ROE is the industry standard. Their ROE is doubling what the industry is putting up 
and their economic, uh, excuse me, equity multiplier has fallen in half over time. And their ROA is up every single year and 36% over time. Their market to book ratio is slowly rising and double the industry. So the, the market values their equity much higher than um, what their book value of equity is. And their economic value added almost doubled over time and their enterprise value almost tripled over time. So their numbers are super solid and I would recommend Hershey Company for investment since they have really no negative indicators. Next we move on to the oil field services and equipment industry losers. Uh, first we have Weatherford International. They really have no positive signs whatsoever. Uh, their current ratio is close to zero pretty much every single year. Their times of return is very low and in 2013 it was really close to one. So they're barely covering their debt at the moment. Their profit margin, return on assets, and return on equity are negative three out of the five years and their economic value added was highly negative all five years. So there's really uh, not much to like when you're looking at their ratios. Next we have Technip SA. Their ratio is kind of like Kellogg's, pretty mixed, hard to get a beat on. Their ROE and ROA are trending up, but they're still below the industry average. But as an analyst, at least you like to see positive trends. Um, and their, but their market to book and total asset turnover are 40% below the industry average. So we have some ratios suggesting some inefficiency on their part. So I don't hate them, but I don't love them. Next we have FMC Technologies and RPC Incorporated. FMC Technologies, their ROE is down every year and over time is down 40%, but it is still above the industry average. They do take a little more debt than the industry, well, but their and their total asset turnover is steady and above the industry average. Their market to book is pacing the industry by up to double, so they are more efficient than the industry with their equity. Um, there's there's enough numbers to like with uh, FMC, but their ROE being down every single year is just too huge of a concern for me to to uh, recommend them for investment. Next we have RPC Incorporated. Uh, RPC is, they're also tough to get a beat on. They had a really terrible 2009. Times interest earned, profit margin, return on assets, return on equity, total asset turnover, and economic value added were all negative in 2009. Times interest earned, profit margin, ROA and ROE all skyrocketed in 2010 and 2011 and they kind of leveled off in the most recent two years. So they they have some pretty extreme numbers. Um, uh, their economic value added was positive 2010 through 2013 as well. So pretty much after 2009 everything has looked pretty solid with RPC but it's hard for me to recommend a company that had highly negative numbers in 2009 and then skyrocketed in 2010 and 2011 and then just kind of leveled off in 2012 and 2013. Uh, I value consistently pretty greatly and there's, there's some inconsistencies with RPC. Next, I have my winner of this industry, Halliburton. Their ROE decomposition is pretty flawless. Um, they take about 25% less, 25 less debt than the industry with uh, ROA about 28 to 45% above the industry. Their ROE is only marginally better than the industry, but their decomposition is perfect. Enterprise value is up every single year and up 75% over time, and it is pacing the industry by two and a half times or higher. Uh, their interest coverage is below the industry. This might be their biggest negative, but they're still covering their debt by seven to ten times. Their price to earnings ratio is currently between its maximum and minimum values. So um, to me, I'd say right now they're fairly valued. There's, their price to earnings ratio has room to grow. So they're fairly valued, they're growing, and they have great trends. So I would choose them for investment. And finally, we have our industry comparisons. 
Overall, the oil field industry has taken less debt, so their times interest earned numbers are higher. They might be taking less debt because the industry is more risky as a whole, more volatile as a whole. They take as much debt as the packaged food industry, there'd be more risk of default. Um, and the, the, the rest of the numbers kind of support this trend. Uh, a lot of the ratios are a lot more volatile, such as return on equity and return on assets. They're all fluctuating a little bit more in, more in the oil field services and equipment industry. Economic value added was negative. The average was negative all five years. Uh, this probably was due to Weatherford, Weatherford skewing the numbers a little bit, being so highly negative in most of their numbers. But even without Weatherford, their numbers are still more volatile compared to the packaged food industry. Um, uh, so yeah, the oil field seems higher, seems prone to higher highs and lower lows than the packaged food industry. And overall, I just love Hershey Company's numbers with really no negatives and straight positives. Perfect ROE decomposition, ROE double the industry. So my overall winner in this project is Hershey Company. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.